He can see he did like his Mopar stuff, but he wasn't stuck on one brand or another. And there's an oddball one back here that we're going to show. Out at this old farm estate, just across the border into Oklahoma. Mix of old and new. So we'll start out with this oldie. This is going to be 1924, 5, somewhere in there, Dodge truck. And this one looks like they kind of fixed it up maybe in the 70s or 80s. You see the F body Trans Am, I think, bucket seats in there. Somehow the doors went missing somewhere along the line. But this thing, probably realistically in the last 30, 40 years, ran and drove. But who knows now what kind of tinkering it would need to get it going. And you can see they've had cattle out here. And the old man cared enough about the old truck to lean a fence panel against it so that they'd kind of stay off of it but i mean for what's here pretty solid start for somebody looking for a project mix of everything here cars trucks tractors a lot of this stuff i think they probably drove and used and it just never left the farm i spy an old truck tucked back here behind the barn Looks like a Dodge. Yep. 39 to like 47. This is a later one, probably 46, 47, I think. Pretty solid looking old truck. Probably red. The reds that they painted these with were very unstable for uv light and so they fade out and just kind of rust it looks like surface rust but there's actually still some pigment there but the sun just pretty well cook them out see pretty spartan cabin inside there and you can see the black paint fared way better than the red in the sun but it all patinas out after so many decades. Old oil drums. Just a lot of stuff left over from the years and decades. Looks like a Chevrolet chassis that was requisitioned into a bail wagon. And this old Ford... 48 to 52 decent truck I mean it's no peach but it's not totally used up either still enough there left to restore I think and this factory accessory grill guard see quite a few of those on Chevrolet's but I think I think that's probably the first one on a Ford of this era that I've ever seen. So that's a pretty neat little piece to run across. Surely somebody restoring one of these old trucks would want that. On this other side, about the same. But definitely good enough bones that somebody can resurrect this old thing. And then this, looks like a Model A, Double A truck, gave its life to become something. Drilling rig, I would guess. I don't know if that's for water wells or oil wells, or if there's a difference. You can see... Somebody put a lot of work and time and effort into 
rebuilding it, reconfiguring it into the rig that you see here. Obviously just memories and yard art at this point. I don't even know for a hobby if somebody would be able to get that thing going. Steel manure spreader. Looks like junk, but the Amish guys, they'll actually buy these and use them. Fix them up. Couple Massey combines. Those are scrap. Refrigerated box there. There's the old Dodge we looked at starting out. Old farmhouse that's never seen a coat of paint in the last 40 years. And a shed filled with all kinds of what's it gadgets. Got the little lathe. Tools, parts, you name it. This little craftsman cabinet, kind of neat. Somebody collected vintage craftsman tools. That'd be a great little display spot to park them all in. And a bunch more old trucks, it looks like, back in this little pasture. Kind of nice that the cattle had been in here through the season because they keep all the vegetation munched down. A lot of times you go in these places and it's grown up so tall you can't even see where each of the vehicles are hardly. This is one of these old GMC like 5500 medium duty. This one's gotten pretty pounded in the front. Just Straight six in there, probably a 292. Always a little baffling to me. You see one of these giant medium duty trucks and all that carrying capacity and just straight six to move them around, but that's what people were used to. Wreck Chevy, strictly parts, frames accordion. This old three-quarter ton Dodge, late 60s to about 70, 71. Tailgates aren't reproduced for these, so if you find a good one, there's good money in them, but that one's not. This old GMC, 1960 to 63. Got the wraparound windshield. Old, probably highway dump truck being painted orange like that. Oh, Caldwell, Kansas Street Department. So that was old retired city truck. Another one of these GMC 5500s. Looks like V6 powered by the badge. I never really was a fan of these trucks. I always thought the light duty ones were ugly and the medium duty version was even uglier. Four wheel drive Chevy truck. Realistically parts, but... Body's still surprisingly good. Old 89 or so Dodge, three quarter ton. Parts truck, probably by this point. 48 to 50 Dodge. This one's actually a five window. And it's got the bigger five inch bolt circle hubs. This series of truck, you could get the four and a half inch hubs and the five inch. Probably just slightly bigger capacity. Really straight, honest old truck. Not the most desirable among collectors, but 
all these old pickups have come up in value and that one's risen along with the rest. GMC 7567, somewhere in there. Four wheel drive, got the accessory front bumper guards and these bed rails. These, if they're in good shape, they'll bring thousand bucks on eBay, but unfortunately the ones on that truck pretty beat. Here we've got another, supposed to be several of these 64 Dodges here on the sale. That one's wrecked, but still as solid as it is being down here in Oklahoma, there'd be plenty of good parts on there to save a rusty one another one of these gmc's probably 77 78 somewhere in there rusty durango and then another 64 polara pretty solid old car really Missing some grill parts, but other than that, kind of hard to fault the old thing. Here is 64 Polara number three. Wow, look at this thing. Super straight, super solid, complete. That thing is very, very well preserved. A little bit of sun kissed patina on there. All the trim's nice and straight. Uh, you can see being south like this, the price you pay for a body this nice is a little bit of a cooked interior. Everything on it just. Pretty well preserved. Polaro was top of the line. They also had a 330 and then a 440. And those were just model names. They didn't have anything to do with engine size. Most of these family sedans that you see, they were either slant six powered or 318 poly. And the lion's share of them were push-button automatic, which 64 was the last year for that push-button automatic. And this old truck, 76, 7, somewhere in there. This is a one-ton C30. This is the standard wheelbase. They had a longer wheelbase available for custom bodies. This one's got the blazer bucket seats with the console, kind of neat. Obviously someone swapped them in there, that's not factory. Then 78.9, somewhere in there, Dodge, three quarter ton, four wheel drive. So this is badged as the power wagon. Manual transmission. Probably at this point, realistically, just a parts truck. But if somebody had dreams and visions of building a four-wheel drive, that's probably a decent chassis to start with. 73 Dodge Polara. Two-door hardtop. Came here all the way from Missouri. Really a pretty solid car. Unfortunately, you can see the Kids with Bricks crew got to this row of vehicles pretty bad. Smashed glass is the norm. 383 car. I would assume anyway. Once that glass is gone, it just doesn't take long for 
these old interiors to just weather all the way out. But if a guy was working on a 73 two-door, there's a lot of good parts there. Pretty nice front end still on that one. And this old thing, pull behind scraper. Probably salvage. Stuff like that is just pretty outmoded by today's standards. And this old Fury, 70, I believe. And this is about the same as the others. Interiors. Kind of shot by this point. You see that's a pillared hardtop, and it's the Grand Coupe. G-R-A-N, not Grand with a D. And you can see that dished back window. This was a direct competitor to the Impala Custom Coupe or the Caprice. With that back window design like that. This one, the body's just pretty tough shape. This old thing's beat down as they get. See the 383 badge there on the hood, which is still home. AC car, power brakes. Not sure if this was disc brake or not. Let me take a peek here. Nope, those are drums. There you see, pretty intact under the hood, so if a guy had one that was missing an engine and needed a bunch of little pieces, there'd be everything for it all. 79, or no, it's, I think, an 80 with those square headlights. I think that was a one year on the 73 to 80. That they had the square headlights. Pretty solid body, honestly. See, it's got some Bondo and, of course, the broken glass. But what's here is really pretty usable. I mean, most of these K5 Blazers and these GMC Jimmies that you see are just totally eaten by rust so this one even as rough as it is it's still actually probably justifiably savable just because the body's relatively solid still see when they beat the glass out they missed a few times this is the half top See, it's got a steel cab and then fiberglass rear section. Monte Carlo should be a 74. That was a real pretty blue color they had on there. What a shame. I mean, otherwise, perfect body. Not rusty. Didn't ever get eaten up by a vinyl top. But the kids get the glass, and realistically, against the value of one of these cars, by this point, even being straight, relatively rust-free car, it's just really realistically parts at this point. Plymouth is a 37 or 8. See these 30s cars, natural fiber upholstery, wool, mohair, cotton, whatever. It just shreds and goes away. This thing, realistically, is going to be a parts car. It doesn't have 
a real wow factor of body condition. See these lion 16 inch hubcaps. And up here is the factory cap. Those lion caps are an accessory and a lot of your customizer guys kind of like them. 50 Dodge four door. Little green machine. Strictly a parts car at this point. These cars, they sold a lot of them. And there's still a lot of them around that are pretty nice. And they've just kind of languished in collector value. This one would be... A monumental task to restore. So strictly parts. And there's a blazer. Probably 70, 5, 6, 7, somewhere in there. Pretty decent body in this one. It's got the optional sliding side windows. High back bucket seats, got the rear bench in there, and fortunately the kids didn't beat this one to pieces. Kind of a neat color combo, copper and cream, not super common. Does have the luggage rack up there on the topper, don't know if that's factory. Overall... Realistically, for the amount of repro parts that are available for these, that one's definitely restorable. Then here's one of these GMC 5500 trucks. Real nice powder blue color. Any of these just... Sitting like this are probably realistically scrap. In our area, there's just not a market for them. The farmers have all moved to grain hauling with semis. And especially one of these. I mean, you can see the layer of dust on there. For as long as it's sat, it's going to have soft brakes and spoiled gas. And there's just no reason. John Deere B, another one for parts. This is a aluminum boat. It is a Texas made. These old, kind of a weird Weird tractor with that big nose on there. So this is the lineup. Ford, Chevrolet, Dodge, Plymouth. You can see he wasn't stuck on one brand or another, but he did like his Mopar stuff, and there's an oddball one back here that we're going to show. This is a square bale loader stacker hay bus, whatever you want to call it. And these several different brands of them built over the decades. And not exactly sure what the brand of this one is. But if you look under here, it's pretty much... I guess a school bus chassis, you'd say. And it is 318 powered. See the distributor in the back there? Got the Beehive alternator. And see they dropped that engine right about in the middle of the frame so they could get the deck height down. And these are... 
something I've seen around before, but this is the first time I've ever really filmed one in depth. So, kind of neat the horseshoe brake and clutch pedals. This is actually the radiator, so you can see the cooling pipes that run down. And then there's an auxiliary fan on the motor. See the pipes run up to the radiator stand up here. And then I believe it's got its own fan there on it. This is actually the radio. Now I'm going to force that cover. But these were a pretty common accessory piece on farm tractors mainly. So pretty easy to see the theory of the operation. They just drive around the hay field and line up to the square bale and forks hit it, conveyor moves it up. There you can actually see the brand Dewey's something bale. I would assume there'd be a driver and then a stacker, maybe a guy with a hay hook to put them there on the deck. So it wasn't. Then. It's like all the same model of John Deere. Guy liked Mopars enough, he had uh, 318 lawn tractors too. Ha ha. Sears Suburban. I mean, a lot of this stuff, probably as long as it's sad, it's going to be parts. And this guy here, Model A chassis. It's been requisitioned for portable propane tank. Not exactly sure what the purpose of that would have been, but maybe if they needed to fill a propane tractor out in the field, I guess you could. <laughs> I don't have any idea. All right, show of hands. Who remembers Build a Basket Wheels? The poor man's true spoke.